Sin duda alguna, HTC ha sido una de las empresas que mayor ha contribuido a la expansión de la realidad virtual en nuestros días. Y mientras Oculus salía sin mandos gestuales, HTC ya desde cero salía con Lighthouse, uno de los mejores sistemas de tracking externo que conocemos. Y bueno, han pasado dos años y queríamos volver a hablar con HTC para que nos comentara cómo ha visto el tiempo que ha pasado, qué han aprendido y cuáles son las conclusiones que han podido sacar después de todo este tiempo. Estamos con Graham Brim, que es el Manager Product Marketing de HTC Vive. Y le vamos a hacer algunas preguntas. How are you? Really good, thanks. It's awesome to be here at the Gamescom, actually. So, really well. Yeah. It's a good question, actually. Um, I think the real truth is they all live together. So, Vive this year, we've really tried to push out, like you say, the various areas. So, yes, there was a headset, then Vive Port Content Platform, Vive X, the accelerator program to support the startups and then arcades as part of that as well. It's all part of the ecosystem, and you hear that word from us a lot this year. It's a bit of a buzzword, we're really trying to grow it. The world of VR is growing, more and more is coming along, and we're seeing that with better content as we get through show to show, uh, month to month. Um, so there's not one that stands out as being head and shoulders above the others. All of them are growing together. Viveport is actually really well at the moment. There's a few things that we focused on this year. One of them was Viveport subscription, actually. So that means that we're allowing people to have a selection of titles that they can change each month. So they can get a feel without even having to buy titles. They can get a feel for what they really like, try out new titles. Maybe they want to buy it later. Maybe they just want to change, try new titles. So it's a really cool way for people to experience because the fact is, now, of course, there's thousands of games, experiences out there. So it's really, how do people get access to all of this? So it's really bringing more content to people in an easy way. Um, I think you need to look at it from a perspective that is actually great news because it says where VR is. Companies do things because they see a potential and VR really is a booming industry. Um, we're seeing that from hardware entrance, but the most exciting part for me is actually the software entrance. So when I say that, I'm talking about the big studios. Um, great example, so we're showing here uh, on the Gamescom, we're showing uh, Fallout 4 with Bethesda. Um, big studios getting behind with real serious AAA content, and it gives people a reason to want to have the vibe. And that's exciting because that's just the tip of an iceberg. There's more studios working on games, some are announced, some we can't talk about at the moment, but we're just really excited about. Well, we think the same. Yeah. This is a lot of visuals, a lot of games, so it's a pretty good moment for... It for really them. is, actually, and it doesn't, it's not an overnight process to build an enormous, amazing game. It takes time, so we've been on the market now for 18 months, and of course, in the background in this time, there's been a lot of work ongoing, and now we're starting to see them actually getting into the eyes of real people. So we're showing for the first time in Europe this week, we're showing Fallout 4, for example. So it's going to be awesome to see how people react to it. I'm quite excited. The challenge is there's a bit of learning to do. It's not quite a one-to-one -one the same. You don't take an amazing game in a PC and it becomes an amazing VR game. You actually need to think a bit about, say, interaction. So on Fallout 4, for example, you're using your controllers and you can interchange between your weapons. You have a Pip-Boy on your other hand, and it's actually turning what would normally be controlled through a gamepad or a keyboard into actual more human reactions because you're not just controlling the character, you are the character, and that's the key difference. It's your game to, your game to experience. I think it's a few things. One of them is just that actually you've got to apply human laws. We all are used to, for example, a certain speed of movement. If you look at, say, the speed that you can shoot very quickly at in, a, say, a PC game, and then watch a human do that in real life, it's maybe not quite as quick. So you've got to maybe change some of the motion, the interaction. Um, 
you've got to add a human element to the interaction. I mean, you see now I'm talking to you, I'm waving my hands around. <laughs> I do that a lot. Um, but it's actually, that's how people behave. People need to use their hands. People need to understand the movement and feel comfortable with that. So there's just lots of small learnings. And we've seen that over the past two years since we first announced. We've seen a lot of the developer community learning from each other. So somebody comes up with a new idea, others adopt it, somebody brings another idea, and it's a really collaborative world at the moment, which is something that's quite exciting as well. What would I change? <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great question. Um, I think for me, I love, like, for example, the comfort factor that we have the deluxe audio head strap. That makes a massive difference, the speed of getting it on, off, and the comfort and the quality as well. Actually, no loss of quality there without using, say, big cans. So I would have loved to, for example, have had that a bit earlier. Um, but again, this is all development, so it's kind of normal. Um, I think, to be fair, what I would have liked to have known was more tips for how you develop great content. So some of the rules that we've learned along the way. So for example, motion, about interaction, about hands or weapons or whatever it is you use in a game about sort of control, turning the body into a controller, that kind of stuff would have been awesome to give, or for developers to know themselves two years ago, because then you've got two years of learnings less, and so you're further down the pipeline. Um, but in the terms of the pure product, um, not so much actually. It's really kick-started a wave of innovation around us, and that's been great to see. Did he feel very right at the moment and it still feels very right right now. Yeah, it does. Um, I mean, we pride ourselves in having best in class VR. Um, and that's not meant to sound arrogant. It's just that we really believe in what we have as a product. Um, and we are 18 months or so on the market now and it still feels uh, just the best VR out there. It's a beautiful thing to use still and um, hopefully you've experienced that. So you, you know what I'm talking about. There's not too much I can say about the ecosystem, really. I mean, we're focusing on what we're doing. Um, I think maybe it's worth saying that it's exciting to see other people engaging in and around the, the world of whether it's VR, MR. It's exciting to see what people are doing. Um, but we're really focusing on what we're here. That's the main thing, really. What we've seen so far is a sort of proof of concept that you're right with updated lighthouses. Um, I'm sure we're going to see it at some point in future. What I can't confirm is when and how that's going to come. But I think it answers a question that we've come from, we've received from quite a few developers who are building for, say, larger scale elements, whether that's for arcades, whether that's for enterprises. So for use in an industrial environment, um, so using more than two lighthouses. But in terms of details, how and when, I can't really add anything there. I, I think it's um, something that the guys from Valve have developed, um, and it's pretty awesome. But it, it's more of a proof of concept of how an awesome controller can be. It doesn't mean it's a product that's going to come as a consumer product from us. So we're really keeping our eyes on what we're doing with Vive and the Vive controllers, the Vive tracker, the Vive ecosystem, that, that part. But um, it's not a Vive product as such. So I can probably say not too much more than what we've already stated about it coming later this year. Um, working with obviously Google as a partner, running on a daydream system. So it's really exciting product. Um, I think it's probably worth um, leaving the rest of the detail though till we make some public announcements and sort of show it to the world. But it's something we're really excited about. The main difference between them is how you access your content in the Daydreams, the platform that doesn't run in China. So for example, we'd have a different way of getting content on the device there. So for example, Viveport in China. Um, in terms of the hardware product, uh, we're not looking at large differences there.
These are things I can't really talk about. I mean, I think it's better that there's some awesome innovation, not just, so for example, eye tracking, but completely around the VR ecosystem. Um, but I, I can't talk about any further. So the, plans. the other way, it's, uh, there's a still line for the first mobile. This is actually the really important thing is that our big focus at the moment is Vive and actually bringing out new content, bringing the AAA games to it. So getting the Vive further into more people's houses, more people using Vive, and actually bringing more content to the people who've bought Vive already because they've supported us from day one and we really want to give them sort of reward for that, so have something awesome to play. So um, that's what's really exciting for us, especially as we head into the coming quarter. So for example, Fallout that you've seen, Talos Principle that we're showing here as well. So awesome games coming out of the PC world and console world coming to Vive. That for me is our really big focus and big story at the moment. What I can really say there is we're really focusing on Vive as we have on the market today. Um, and building up an ecosystem around that, whether that's using, for example, Vive trackers. So opening up accessories, we've got a couple on the desk over there, a couple of blasters that you can attach tracker to and then play VR games with a gun. Um, so encouraging that ecosystem that people can do more with their Vive. Um, encouraging more people to get into the world of Vive, opening VR to more people, for example, Fallout 4 fans. So with the VR that we're showing there. Um, that's really our big focus at the moment. I think what is the game changer for VR is more and more content coming that hooks certain people. And it's very individual, actually. There's not a right thing. There's not one game that everybody here loves, which is why we're showing multiple things on our stand. So Fallout 4 is a massive deal and it's an awesome game and Fallout fans, I'm really hoping, are going to find it brilliant. And hopefully we're going to see a lot of that here this week. But there's also a lot of fans out there, for example, for Talos. Love a completely different style of game, puzzle, slightly different pace, a different style of doing something. And for them, that's, that's what changes the world. Um, for other people, it was things Google Maps, the ability to go anywhere and everywhere. That's what changes the world. And it's very, very, very personal thing. When we ask around our team, everybody's got a sort of different favorite piece of content. And I love that because it's not just about one thing. It's the whole environment of that VR. I don't, I don't know about plans for Fallout 4 beyond what we're working on with 5. So I can only really say about how exciting a piece of content it is for us. But I can't really talk about Our focus in the world of Vive and around exclusivity is that actually if a developer is looking to make money and they were looking to do, use other platforms to do that, then that's actually it's their business and we're willing to support them. What we're really keen on is the experience they give for Vive be the best one. So for Fallout 4, for example, the way you can interact on the controllers, we're hoping that it is the best possible implementation that we can have there. For, for other games too, it's really about Vive should stand as a reference for what is possible in VR. What you can do in terms of the motion, so using room scale, using the accessories, using the trackers, using the interaction on the controller, using the brilliance of the tracking so it knows exactly where you are. What developers do beyond that, that's really their choice. And I encourage them to do what they want to make money because actually we need developers. They're a really important part of our ecosystem, really important. But um, what we want them to know is that they can do their best work with Vive. You know, there's one thing I like about this, um, and we've seen that in the people who've bought VR headsets so far. They really care. Very, very passionate. And that is actually something that gets us out of bed in the morning. Um, and you see it come in places like this. You meet people who really care about what they're buying, what they're experiencing, and that drives us. Because we don't want to give these people a bad experience. It's make, making sure they have a really great experience. It's really a great thing to be part of. I 
I think you need to look at it as part of a bigger plan, actually, from what we're doing. So the world of VR is really competitive, and there's some awesome headsets out there. But for Vive now, we've been on the market almost a year and a half, and we're heading into a really, really important season. Um, and that season's important because it's the time of year when people buy, buy new products, when people make big investments. But also, equally important, it's the time when we're going to have awesome content coming out. So there's even more reason. And that's all about broadening VR. So it's a great time for Vive now just to go wider, open up to more people, give more people a chance to jump in, enjoy the experience. And that's our thinking with it. I don't want to discourage anyone from developing for Vive. Really, it's our lifeblood. Um, I think what you naturally see is the best games do rise to the top. So we've seen some awesome things that have come from indie developers that have risen to the top. So for example, on our booth just around the corner here, we've got the new version of Space Pirate Trainer running. So it's developers who've come up with a great concept, built a great game, and it's become, somebody said it earlier, a VR classic. <laughs> so a year and a half in, it's a VR classic. Um, and that, for me, is the important thing. So yes, I want people to build for Vive. It's a really important thing. And within there, the VR community is still pretty vocal. If something's good, they'll tell you. And if something's good, they'll tell their friends and word gets around. So I think the cream rises, it's an English expression, the cream rises to the top. And um, I think we, we, we see that. So the cool thing also is that everyone's learning from each other. So like I said a minute ago, people are solving problems, taking the idea from others, solving another problem, solving another. So actually what you see now is a developer who built something 18 months ago compared to what they could build today, they may take a completely different approach because of what they've learned in the meantime. This is, this is important actually because it's something we've had from day one and we've always said with good VR you shouldn't get sick and good VR is a combination. It's great hardware that gives you very low latency so when you move your world comes with you and it's not because that's what would get you sick or well, for example very high frame rate so running 90 frames a second but to do that also you also need great software so and that's where what developers have been learning so ways of working with motion ways of giving you your frame of reference ways of controlling your horizons classic things that actually can cause issues but actually good vr should never do it um, it's something we really focus on actually on the shows to make sure that people have a good VR experience because a lot of people are trying VR for the first time still. Um, so we live in a world where we, VR is our world, but actually we need to bring more people in and that's all about showing them good VR. So I don't personally like the term VR legs because I would say with good VR it's irrelevant. You really shouldn't need them. It's interesting, I think some of it's personal. Some people um, are more comfortable with one style or another, and some games have built-in options where you can change from one to the other. Because some people like teleportation, like you say, some people actually don't, they like point and move. Um, and that really is for everyone themselves to decide. Um, personally, I also really like teleportation as an example. So Talos principle, for example, is teleporting. And for me, that works really well. It's a good discussion, though. And the actual answer is there's not a right answer. It's what you yourself think, what works for you. Um, Probably let, let that, that gamer choose. Let, give people choice. And that's what we've been about from day one as well. Give people choice. Let people decide what works for them. What, and yeah, really just encourage that. Encourage developers to build based on the feedback from the community because it's the community who will determine whether something's successful or not. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we will hope to see you in the next game is come. I don't know if with the HTC Vive 2.0. Oh. 
I'm hoping next time we come to Gamescom, we're discussing what an awesome success Fallout 4 is, how everyone's got it, Fallout 4 VR. We're talking about some other titles that aren't even on our list today, or we're not talking about today, and how awesome it is that they've got. And we're probably going to be showing something completely new that's off the radar altogether. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, I want to say hello to Rialo Virtual. Four great years and looking forward to a lot more.